Hey, what's up, Integrity Fam? We're back with another lab session. And today we're going to have a look at server side request fortune. And we're going to have a quick look how to search for them, what to do, what to look out for, and then what we can do to exploit it and what we can get out of it. And without further ado, let's immediately have a look at today's application once again provided by port swigger and what we're seeing over here is a shop we want to make sure that burp is activated because we are going to need that for this session going back we look at the shop we click around a bit we see that there's like a logo we cannot do much with that and then we see a few details button so let's have a look at the page and we do see that it's a pretty simple page with a drop down london paris milan we just select one of them and there's a check stock button. So we click that, we hop back into Burp and we see all the requests that have been going out. And if we look at them, there has only been a couple of them and we are looking for a URL in the request. Looking at the first one, there's not really much inside. Then there is a JavaScript file that is getting used by the application, another one, we don't have that under our control and there is no URL inside. And there is another path, academy lab header, no URL inside. And then there's a post request to product slash stock. And if we look a little closer on that one, we actually see a parameter called stock at API. And that parameter has a value which is being sent to the web server that contains an IP address. So that is interesting. We're going to send this to the intruder right now and see what we can do with that. So let's go to Burb Intruder and go to the Positions tab and let's get rid of all the current position. Now what we're doing next is we're selecting the part that we want to have and we do see an internal IP address over here. So let's set a position marker on the last octet on the one and what we're going to do next is we're going to payloads and an IP address goes from 1 to 255 so we are selecting the payload type numbers and say from 1 to 255 and the step count is going to be 1 and once we've done that we can already run our attack. So we just hop over to start attack and we're going to have a look at the intruder attack window. And this doesn't take long until the attack is finished. And now we have all the results ready. So let's look at our initial payload. We do see that we have a 200 HTTP response. So that we already know because that was the initial request. And then we're checking if there's any other interesting statuses. And we do see a lot of 500s, but we can also sort this by status. And then we see one that says 404. And looking at the payload, we do see that we were sending a request to 192.168.0.183. And looking at the response, we do get a not found answer. And that usually means the IP address exists, but the path that we've been browsing to doesn't exist. So we're sending this to repeater. Once again, within Burb, we hop over to the repeater tab and we'll just send this one more time, just to verify if we're still getting the same response, which we do. So next up, it's up to us to find a path that exists on this server. And Usually that means we would have to brute force various paths right now. So we're going to delete the whole path and maybe search for no path at all, but we still get not found. And then we might want to say, let's try out a directory called test. And we click on send, but this also doesn't work. And you see where this is going. So we could manually brute force that, try out various different values, but usually you, you you would use intruder one more time to try like a big amount of directories. 
In that case, I know that admin exists because I've already solved the challenge. And we do see that we get a huge response if we browse to that IP address slash admin. And interestingly, it says admin panel in the response. And if we look closer, there is another URL inside that says something about deleting a user. So at this point, it's getting really interesting, right? And we're going to try it out. We're going to use the URL for deleting a user called call us. And we're just going to copy it and try it out in Burp Suite's repeater. So we're saying, let's try to delete call us, let's hit send, and we're getting a 302 found. And looking at the lab, we already get a congratulations spanner. So we have solved the lab. All right, let's reiterate one more time what we've been doing. So basically, we were browsing a web application searching for a request going out, being sent to the web server that contains a URL. Why are we doing this? Because we want to manipulate that URL and specify something that is not intended by the application that we want to try out. Next up, we were seeing that we were already going to an internal IP address. So it was kind of, well, already on the table that we want to try out all the internal IP addresses that are available. And we were using Burp Suite's intruder for that. Once we've done that, we ran through all the possible IP addresses. We found one that existed. So we were browsing to that IP address. We're sending requests to that IP address from the original web application, and we were getting an error because the path wasn't found we were browsing to. And then we were brute forcing different paths until we found an admin panel. And that admin panel was reachable without authentication and that enabled us to delete a user. This was obviously just one example. Make sure to check out our Academy. Please like this video, subscribe in the top right corner leave us a comment and I will talk to you folks soon.